This video will give a brief overview of how you can use the structured asthma medication review template to help support your patient to achieve better asthma outcomes. It addresses the core pillars of good asthma care, adherence to inhaled corticosteroids, short acting beta 2 agonist reliance, inhaler technique, and medicines optimization. At its core is the premise of collaboration with your patient to involve them in the decision-making process and ultimately give space to make the best decision for your patient while still achieving targets such as QAF and the IIM. If the patient is only prescribed asthma medications, the review could be classified as a structured medication review. However, this should not be coded if they are on other medications that are not reviewed as part of the review. This template has been designed by pharmacists for pharmacists, but can also be used by other clinicians with experience in medicines management. It aims to support generalists to, to manage asthma treatment and guides the user through the process with prompts and tips to structure the review, as well as providing embedded resources for the user and the patient. It can be used both in advance of and during the consultation. All or some of the template can be used depending on the specific needs of the patient. My colleague will now talk through a patient case demonstrating how the template can be utilised. Welcome to the Asthma Structured Medication Review. As you can see on the left hand side, there are a number of tabs which will guide us through the, the structured asthma medication review template. And I'll tell you about a patient who came to the surgery recently for her annual asthma review. Jane is a 35 year old mother of two young children and she felt that her asthma was under control. On further questioning, we discovered that she had an ACT score of 15 because she described feeling some breathlessness and a tight chest when rushing around and admitted to waking in the night with a cough maybe twice weekly. She stated that she got good relief from her blue inhaler at these times and on average she uses this once to twice daily. She has had no exacerbations in the last year and as part of the review we completed an asthma management plan. Jane uses a clenal inhaler, 100 micrograms per dose, PMDI, two puffs twice a day. As such, she is prescribed low dose inhaled steroids and a steroid card is not indicated. Looking back over her past medications, we could see that Jane has been prescribed two clenal inhalers over the last 12 months but we would expect her to be prescribed at least seven. This means that she has a medicine's possession ratio of 29%, which indicates that she has poor adherence to her ICS. We had a discussion around her symptom control and her poor adherence, and this involved shared decision-making with Jane, on further questioning, she said she didn't use her ICS because she didn't really feel the benefit. We discussed her goals for asthma management and Jane stated that she would like to be able to play with her children and rush around with her children without worrying about using her inhaler for her asthma symptoms. We discussed how it is the ICS inhaler that treats her airways inflammation, which means she will experience less symptoms during the day and the night. And overall, this should mean that she requires less of her blue inhaler. We discussed treatment options with Jane, and including inhalers that might be more convenient for her. The two main options we discussed were for her to continue with her current inhalers, or to switch to MART therapy or maintenance and reliever therapy. Jane liked the thought of this as she thought it might be more convenient for her if she just had one inhaler that she could use 
for both her treatment and her reliever. Looking back over medications issued, we could see that Jane has been issued with 10 blue inhalers or 10 salbutamol inhalers in the last 12 months. Appropriately, she has not been prescribed any salbutamol nebules. Further to the discussion that we had regarding her adherence to ICS, we discussed the risk of exacerbations and mortality associated with SABA reliance. We discussed the, the risk of adverse drug reactions. And we also discussed the environmental impact, particularly of some um, brands of salbutamol inhaler. We have already discussed symptom control and treatment options. And Jane has already indicated that she likes, that she would like to switch to maintenance and relieve her therapy. It was highlighted to Jane that she will no longer need to use a blue inhaler if she does switch to maintenance and reliever therapy, which Jane is happy with. We can also write some free text in these boxes if we want to elaborate on the discussion. At this stage of the review, we knew that we were going to be switching Jane to maintenance and reliever therapy, so we discussed device options. We offered her um, a pressurised meter dose inhaler, but we emphasised the need for that to be used with a spacer device to make every dose count. We also offered her a dry powder inhaler. Jane indicated that her preference was for a dry powder inhaler because this is better for the environment, but also because it's more convenient as it does not require a spacer. Jane was shown inhaler technique on a dry powder inhaler training device, and then she demonstrated her own inhaler technique on a dry powder training device. And Jane demonstrated excellent technique following all seven steps. Jane was sent a link to inhaler technique demonstration videos via text message to reinforce what she was taught during the review so that she could look back on it after she had left the clinic room. In terms of the environment, we have promoted good adherence to ICS. We have discussed cyber reliance. We have optimized inhaler technique and we have optimized treatment. We have discussed the environmental impact um, of MDI use with Jane. We have discussed possible alternatives with Jane. And Jane has indicated that she would like March therapy via a dry powder device. We can state here that her inhaler technique has been optimized. And there are some useful resources at the bottom of the tab. As previously mentioned, Jane has not had any asthma exacerbations in the last 12 months. She is not prescribed maintenance or corticosteroids, and she is not under specialist asthma care. We have stepped her up in terms of her asthma management. And um, she is not prescribed theophylline, she is not prescribed Montelukast, and Jane has never smoked. We do not need to use the diagnosis clarification tab as Jane has already had her diagnosis confirmed. And we have already filled out the QAF annual review tab. Thank you for watching this demonstration and we hope you have found it useful.